Hello my dear students welcome to computer science class let us continue with our chapter that is introduction to C++ in our previous video classes we have covered the operator that is bitwise operator in this video class we shall cover the ternary or the conditional operator some shorthand operators and then some special operators so let us start with the ternary or the conditional operators the term ternary says that okay the operator that could operate on three or more operands okay the operators which can operate on three or more operands we can refer them as the ternary operator or we can refer them as the conditional operator look at here the question mark and the colon these two operators are been referred to as an ternary operator we shall see how exactly the ternary operator works so let us see the syntax first specify the condition after the condition specify the question mark followed by the expression 1 colon and then followed by the expression 2 see here on satisfying the given condition whatever the value is there in the expression 1 will be selected as the true part and on not satisfying the condition suppose if the condition if it is fails or if the condition is false then whatever the value is there in the expression 2 will be selected as the false part so on satisfying the given condition always the true part of the expression will be executed on not satisfying the condition always the false part of the expression will be executed okay so let us and so therefore here it is given the question mark conditional operator if the condition is true the expression in the true part is selected otherwise the expression in the false part is been selected now let us understand with an example here we shall move the value of 5 into the variable x and uh, the variable y consider uh, consider the value as 10 and one more variable we have taken it as c here now let us see what is the how to use the ternary operator now here x is greater than y this is my condition if x is greater than y as a true part it should take the value of the x as true part if the x is not greater than y if the condition is fails it should take the value of y as the false part now therefore what will be the value of c value here what is the x value 5 is greater than 10 if 5 is greater than 10 the answer will be 5 else the answer would be 10 now we shall check the condition whether 5 is greater than 10 no the condition is false therefore the it takes the answer the it takes the c value as what as a 10 so actually the 10 is the y value what, but whatever the calculation happens the answer will be moved into a variable c right so since 5 is greater than 10 the condition doesn't satisfy it will directly go for the value to select what is there in the false part what is there in the false part the value is 10 so the 10 value is been moved into a variable known as c therefore c holds the value as 10 so this is how the ternary or the conditional operator works now one more with the one more example i shall explain you here and this is the general syntax that is condition one okay Exp uh, condition question mark followed by the true part of the expression then followed by the false part if this condition satisfies this expression will execute if this condition is not satisfying the this expression will be executed now let us consider the statement largest is equal to where num is greater than num2 num1 so <coughs> let us assume the value of num1 to be as 1000 and let us assume the value of num2 to be as 500 okay whether 1000 is greater than 500 if so 1000 will be ex uh, will be selected as the value else 500 will be selected as the value so therefore 1000 is greater than 500 yes the condition is true therefore 1000 will be selected as the answer and the 1000 will be moved into a variable known as largest so therefore the largest is equal to we got it as a 1000 so like this ternary or the conditional operator work few more examples are here students now here what is that 7 is greater than 5 whether 7 is greater than 5 yes the condition is true if so the value in the true part will be selected so 7 will be selected and it will be moved into the variable that is the largest 
if 7 is not greater than 5 suppose instead of 7 if I had 7, uh, 17 here 17 is greater than 5 yes the condition so the new value of the largest would be 17 similarly here we have because 17 is greater than 55 here the condition is false if the condition is false means definitely the false part of the value will be selected therefore the value 55 will be selected and it will be moved into the largest so therefore the largest is equal to 55 we got so this is how the examples for the ternary or the conditional operators will be so it is one of the very important question from your exam point of view they'll ask you what is ternary or the conditional operator give one example so among these any one example but you have to write the syntax first okay write the definition write the syntax and quote any one of the example of these okay then next students we shall move on to the next that is the bitwise that is the shorthand operators we shall discuss so shorthand operators the term shorthand in the sense what we can use the operators in terms of shortcut we can write that is what the shorthand operators we can also assign uh, refer them as an assignment operators as per given in your textbook these are the assignment operators i think the first one is we all know very well this is a simple assignment operator which always assigns the value from the right hand side to the left hand side therefore that is c is equal to a plus b will assign the value of a plus b into the variable that is c okay moving on to the next one that is the and this is the add and assignment operator actually we have clubbed two operators here addition plus the assignment operator therefore the name says that add and assignment operator how this will work is usually it will add the whatever is there in the right hand side to the left hand side it will add whatever is there in the right hand side to the left hand side operand and after addition then it will assign the value to the left hand side so instead of writing such a big inst you know, expression here i can rewrite by using the shorthand add assignment operator as this way okay c plus is equal to a which is equivalent to as c is equal to c plus a when you leave about this when you look at this what it is saying it is saying you are adding the right hand operand with the left hand operand what you are adding you are adding the right hand operand with the left hand operand okay after addition you are assigning the entire value again back to the left hand operand okay that is how the short format you can say here okay suppose let us take the example as c to be as 5 and a to be as 10 okay as per this what we are adding the left hand side we are adding the right hand operand with the left hand operand what is the value of a i said a value is as 5 i said the c value has to be 10 so i am adding that 5 with the 10 and the overall answer is 15 15 i am assigning to the, again the left hand side operand therefore the value of c would be 15 similarly we have for the subtraction also multiplication as well as division plus the modulus so subtraction what subtract and assignment operator we are adding two here subtract and assignment operator also we are adding therefore it subtract whatever is there in the right hand side from the left hand side c minus a whatever is there in a we are subtracting from the c after subtraction we are assigning the value to the left hand side that's what instead of writing this way c minus a is equal to a this is how we are able to represent similarly it follows with the multiplication also students so this we can write in this way as it is also called as multiple multiply and assignment operator it multiplies whatever is there in the right hand side okay whatever is there in the right hand side with the left hand assigns that value whatever the result we got again back to the left hand side similarly division also takes place the same way we call it this one as divide and assignment operator so in my next examples if i write instead of writing in this way if i write this you should understand that i'm using the shorthand assignment operators i'll be using okay so whatever it divides the right hand operator right hand operator from the left hand and whatever the result we got assigns to the left hand <coughs> similarly modulus see when it comes to the modulus if we it always gives us the you know remainder it gives whereas in case of division it gives the 
quotient okay how do i represent this is not percentage symbol it is always the you know modulus so it takes the modulus of using the two operands modulus will be taken and it will assign to the left hand side moving on to the left shift and assignment operators in my previous example we know no that is a left shift 2 we were writing okay a left shift 2 plus there again we are assigning the answer to the a only so c left shift equal to 2 rather than writing in this way i'm just skipping this part and directly writing as c left shift is equal to 2 means what c the whatever is there the binary numbers are there in c should be should, you know should we should perform the left shift uh, uh, operand and answer also again i have to reassign it to the variable c only add everything uh, solving remains the same only we are using the shorthand operators here similarly we have the right shift and assignment operator rather than writing in c is equal to c right shift 2 i just similarly directly like and how do you, you remember these one no first you need to specify the operator what you want to perform then uh, uh, you know write the specify the assignment operator followed by how many shifts you need this is how similarly we can even apply shorthand operations for the bitwise and bitwise exclusive or this is exclusive or right and this is the bitwise inclusive or inclusive or means what it is simple or operation exclusive or means xor okay what is the xor says that xor says that either of the operand should be one both operand should not be the same it should not be 0 0 it should not be 1 1 either of the operand is one then the only the overall operation is one so similarly like how i have explained these no same way we can have the bitwise and operator instead of writing in this way we can represent here this way instead of write, representing in the this way we can represent for the bitwise exclusive or you can also say that is x or also fine so with the simple or also we can perform students i hope the shorthand notations you are able to understand now let me explain this with the simple examples see here yeah? the syntax variable name operator name which operations you have to perform then followed by the assignment and then followed by the expression what you have to write so let us assume here if i have to perform x is equal to x minus 10 if i want to perform i can rewrite here as x minus is equal to 10 <coughs> suppose let me consider the x value to be as 20 how do i write this x minus equal to 10 means what 20 minus 10 the new value of x would become as 10 only okay similarly see here x into equal to 5 this can be rewritten as x is equal to x into 5 similarly with the division and similarly with the modulus now here we have the calculations okay now for example assume num1 to be 10 num2 has to be 13 f1 to be as 7.8 and f2 be f2 be as 4.2 now when i write this way okay what it is num1 is equal to num1 plus 50 okay is yes or no addition it is uh, addition uh, and assignment operator it is so num1 is equal to num1 plus 50 what is the num1 value that is 10 10 10 plus 50 the result is 60 similarly here num1 into again num1 is what the original value we should take that is 10 right so 10 into 2 it is 10 into 2 therefore the result i got as 20 similarly here also num2 into is equal to now three numbers i am adding num2 <coughs> num2 into you know 10 it is plus 20 it is okay so therefore what is the value of num2 here it is 13 so first 13 multiplication board mass we have to apply right multiplication is a given uh, preference for so that, that is 13 into 10 we should do that is 130 plus 20 you are adding so therefore the answer i am getting getting here as it is 150 here students moving on to the next one f1 what is f1 here f1 is 7.8 7.8 divided by 1.3 we got the answer as 6.0 similarly here modulus operator what is num2 value 13 13 mod 5 13 mod 5 means that is what 5 2s are 10 we got but what will be the remainder that will be 3 so here we got it as 3 here then f2 plus equal to f1 means what f2 is equal to f2 plus f1 it is correct no so what is f2 here f2 is 4.2 
that is 4.2 plus 7.8 we got so the answer is 12.0 so this is how we can use the shorthand you know in terms of the programming concepts i hope students you are able to understand moving on to the next operators that is the other operators in case of other operators the first way is the size of operators see if i want to know the size of particular data type as i was uh, uh, telling uh, integer is of 2 bytes float is of 4 bytes character is of 1 byte isn't it so if i if you all doesn't know the you know uh, size of that particular you know variable and if i want to know the size of that particular variable then you have to go for the size of operator so it returns the size of a variable how do i use it if i have declared a variable as int a and you want to know the size how many what is the size is being taken by this variable in the computer memory then you have to specify as size of it's a one word size of in the bracket you have to specify the variable name okay where because a is of a type integer what answer i would return it it i would return the answer as 2 here suppose if i had here float a if i had then size of a only if you this pass it will give me the answer as 4 because the size of the floating point data type is 4 bytes okay similarly if i had double a double is again and one more day you know data type again it's a floating point number but their precision will be more then uh, it will give me a size of a it would return me the answer as here it has a 8 okay like this the size of operator always returns the size of the given particular variable next we have the comma operator i think i need not too much explain about the comma operator because you all know if any n, n number of tasks has to be performed or the sequence of operation has to be performed then definitely we are going to use or separate them by using the comma operator so in my previous examples also i have given here comma operator num1 equal to 10 comma num2 is equal to 13 so all these have been separated by the comma operator so the value of entire comma expression is the value of the last expression of the comma separated list that means they are acting as a separators there next we have the dot and arrow operators so member operators used to refer to the individual members of classes structures and unions see whenever we need to uh, you know in terms of pointers whenever we need to access the member functions okay then we are using the dot and the arrow operator so here we are not using much with the dot and arrow operator so you need not to worry about this so whenever we have to <coughs> fetch the members of the class like you know data members when we have to fetch like similarly classes we have structures and unions whenever we have to fetch the member data like you know register number name and all in that case we have to use the dot and the arrow operator okay then we have the casting casting suppose if i want to like someone will be asking in the live class uh, what if i want to have the higher number okay like uh, integer to float if i have to have then you have to make the type casting type casting it will convert from one data type to the another data type for example you might have given as a 2.2000 but if you have used as the integer data type then it will truncate all these things and it will give me as a 2 now what i am doing i am actually converting from floating data type to the integer data type floating is what 2.200 it is there but if i want the answer in terms of integer if i want to it will truncate all the fractional part and it will give me the answer only in terms of integer that is 2 suppose if i had this as an integer 2 and i want this representing in terms of floating point so 2 would return me as not 2.2 rather 2.0 it will give okay suppose if i have an integer value as 50 and i want in terms of representing in terms of floating point it will give me as 50.0 suppose if i have the 50.5 as a number if i have a 50.5 as a number when i convert in the integer form it will give me only as 50 okay that is how the casting is type casting okay converting from one data to type to the another data type then <coughs> then we have the address of operator 
i think this i have explained in the previous classes or previous video classes but still once again it has come under the other operators i shall explain this one address of operator returns the address of the variable okay uh, pointer is a one that points to a variable here both i'll explain it okay let us consider an example x is equal to 25 this is a simple variable next one more i have a declaration here int okay star this is actually refer it as a pointer variable okay asterisk p this means what p is a variable of type pointer okay pointer is the variable which always hold the address of another variable so what is this ampersand refers to ampersand always refers to the address of variable when you look at this part in text is equal to 25 when you when you define this variable in your memory location some to the storage location known as x the name x is a name given to the storage location which is holding the value as 25 at the memory address as triple zero three okay then what i am doing i am uh, you know uh, div, uh, div, uh, taking one more variable of type variable known as p which is of type pointer pointer in the sense always it is holding the address of another variable now what i am doing i have i am passing the address of this x in a variable known as p to pass the address of this variable to the p i should use an operator known as ampersand when the compiler encounters that as ampersand x it will understand that whatever is there in the address of x will have to be moved in a variable known as p okay therefore whatever is there in the address of x is being moved into a variable known as p therefore the value of p will be the address of x that is triple zero three i hope students you are able to understand that's what it is this is a simple variable if any variable which has been declared with this asterisk it has been referred to as a pointer variable so what is a pointer variable pointer variable is a one that holds the address of another variable and what is this ampersand indicates it is an address of variable it indicates the address of any of the operand operand is what is a variable operator means what any addition uh, multiplication division such you know symbols we can refer them as an uh, operator so i hope students here address of operator returns the address of the variable for example ampersand a will give the actual address of the variable a so pointer see here example asterisk k it is pointer to a variable a that means it is pointer a <coughs> always hold the address of some other variable okay so this completes the other operators so now moving on to the hierarchy or hierarchy or the precedence of operators see whenever we get any mathematical expressions it can have more than you know one operators till now we have seen arithmetic operators relational operators right we have many operator bitwise operators but when they we have more than one operators in a given expression to which to which operators you will give the precedence first to which operator you will solve the evaluate the expression first like in case of mathematics we you are following the bodmas rule right bodmas that is first brackets then of then uh, mathematics m a addition okay then the subtraction like this you are giving the hierarchy or the precedence of operators you are giving similarly in c++ programming also we have the concept of you know that is the you know hierarchy or the precedence of operators so in a given expression if okay in a given expression if it contains the multiple operators the order in which the operations has to be carried out are been referred to as an precedence of operators it is also called as an priori priority or the hierarchy of operators see some in one example i can give you like you know as i said 50 into uh, 50 into 8 plus 5 if it is there 50 into 8 plus 5 50 into 8 you will perform first multiplication you will perform first and then you are performing the addition how you are deciding it is based upon the board mass rule as per the mathematics but here also we have something known as the precedence or hierarchy okay <coughs> if any expression is having more than one 
uh, you know expression more than one operators that has to be evaluated then the order in which we are carrying out the operations that order we say it as a precedence or the priority or the hierarchy of operators isn't it now here you see this point what is an expression expression a plus b what is an expression it is a combination of opcode and operand what is opcode here plus is an opcode operands are a and b here also plus and into are the opcode okay okay these are the opcodes then what is an operator operator precedence determines the grouping of terms in an expression and affects how an expression is evaluated now look at this example here 7 plus 3 into 2 as per we know the bond mass rule always the we have to do the multiplication now first we have to group here 3 into 2 i will group 1 then i will take the 7 plus so 3 into 2 that is 6 therefore 7 plus 6 it is 13 so what it is operator precedence now actually i am applying what operator precedence actually i am determining by grouping the terms in an expressions and then i am performing the evaluation therefore the order in which the different type of operators are evaluated is called as operator precedence then what we have how we have to give the precedence first always parenthesis we have to evolve first then if we have the inner parenthesis we we have the outer and we have square, square brackets we have the round brackets like in that case we have to always give the preference for the inner parenthesis first to be evaluated and then the outer parenthesis next comes the preference to the multiplication then the division operators next comes the relational logical and finally the assignment operators are been evaluated so here we have the table okay here we have the table like first always we should give the preference to the that is unary operators that is post fix operators like round brackets square brackets okay then we have the greater then increment and decrement operator so for this post fix operations we post fix in the sense what this is post fix right post increment this is post uh, decrement then specifying the variable name so here it can be pre increment and the pre decrement always the post fix expressions we have to give the preference first next we have to give the preference for the unary operators okay then we have to give for the pointer then we have to give for the ampersand then we have to give the importance to the size of operators if all these are there in the <coughs> expressions to evaluate give first preference to the post fix operators then the unary operators similarly next preference will be given for the multiplicative next additive next the shift next relational equality bitwise logical and or conditional assignment last preference will be given to the comma operator now the thing is what is this associativity associativity means the way of evaluating the expression now in this case in this expression what is the associativity how you are evaluating from the right hand side to the first left hand side am i right because you are giving the uh, you know importance to the multiplication so for multiplication first and addition so associativity determines from which part which side of the you know uh, uh, expression has to be evaluated first in case of multiplicative now multiplication division and modulus all are having the same priority in that case from which side you are beginning the evaluation i have to begin from left hand side to the right hand side okay in case of additive plus sign minus both are having the equal uh, you know priority in that case which way, which uh, from which side you are going to begin the evaluation that is nothing but the associativity understood so similarly we have round brackets square brackets okay uh, greater than this is in post increment post uh, decrement all are having the same priority if all are there within the same expression always starts your expression from evaluating from the left hand side to the right hand side you have to move but in case of what happens in case of unary always if these are there you should do it from the right hand side to the left hand side always in mathematics we have the habit of doing from the left hand side and then based upon the bond mass rule we are applying isn't it so here also see assignment all these short hand assignment are having the same priority but in case of the conditional okay and in case of assignment the associativity will be from the right hand side to the 
left hand side students i hope you are able to understand let me explain with an example here so this is level of precedence first the highest precedence operator precedence always logical not will be having the highest precedence okay logical not we are having and then we have the parenthesis and then the uh, you know multiplication addition and the uh, you know multiplication division model is addition relational okay then we have the this one is logical and logical or okay this is not so this are some of the level of precedence usually you will get to know much uh, need not to bother about it but this one of the example let us consider the expression as 5 into 4 plus 10 minus 6 divided by 2 plus 5 so in this case as per this table which for which we have to give the highest preference we have to give the preference for the postfix wherein we have to solve the the brackets first isn't it so therefore the as per the expression we are grouping the grouping the way in the order in which we are grouping the terms in order to evaluate is said to be as order of preference remember those definitions are all important here so the 10 minus 6 is first evaluated so 10 minus 6 is we got as 4 right then the next step is what 4 next to which we are giving it's you know precedence you are giving priority you are giving next you are giving priority for the that is division because you need to solve the outermost this is the innermost brackets then you should give preference to the outermost therefore 4 divided by 2 next way I got that is 4 divided by 2 is 2 therefore I got 4 plus 2 but still it is though here we are having multiplication next step we need to solve the next innermost you know bracket so this bracket has to be resolved so later I got 5 into 6 plus 5 since multiplication got the highest priority so solve it as per this the we got the steps as 35 okay students so in examination they may ask you solve the given expression by applying the uh, highest precedence priority operators in that case you need to solve like this step by step okay okay students on uh, how to convert the algebraic expression i'll be con explaining this in the next video till that take care of yourself students keep watching the videos and solve the assignment thank you students